Hey everyone, Red Monster here. Welcome to another live episode of School of Motion's Workflow Show, where we talk about tools, tips, and techniques for motion design. Today we're taking a look at Adobe Character Animator, an amazing program that lets you perform your animations instead of just making keyframes. But don't worry, you can make keyframes too if that makes you happy. Now I'll turn this over to the humans to tell you all about why Adobe Character Animator should really be a part of your motion design toolkit. Hey everyone, Kyle here from School of Motion, and thanks Red Monster for that amazing intro, uh, the best intro that I've ever seen. Um, we're going to be talking about Adobe Character Animator today, which is super fun. It's a, a program that I've kind of been watching for like five or six years now, I, I think. It doesn't seem like it's been that long, but it's it's uh, older than you might think. Um, it's such a super fun and uh, amazing piece of software to use, um, and I think I feel like a lot of motion designers haven't been taking it seriously, and uh, you're really missing out. So um, today we have Dave Werner from Adobe, who's going to be telling you all about um, all the cool stuff about this, uh, whether you're brand new to it or you've been uh, using it for a little while, maybe some features you uh, haven't seen. So uh, Dave, what's up? Hey, Kyle. Uh, that was an amazing intro. We got a, a custom red monster intro. I, I think that's uh, yeah. that's as cool as it gets. The, the voice talent, I hope you paid them well, because that was, that was uh, very well. I tried to um, I tried to give some direction to Red Monster to get his voice similar to the way that you do his voice, just based <laughs> on my memory of it. Um, so, but it's probably a little different, like you know, like the Animaniacs reboot, like a couple of the voices, a little bit different. Exactly. Exactly. It works. Yeah. What What are you gonna do? Yeah. And a quick shout out to David Arbor who made that uh, 3D version of Red Monster. Um, yeah. If you don't know, Red Monster is kind of the unofficial, became official mascot of Character Animator. Uh, you'll probably see Red Monster make another appearance today. But um, just to kind of point this out, I made that intro. It's like 30 seconds, maybe. And start to finish, I think it was like 35 minutes, maybe, for me to make that thing, including recording the audio and pushing it through After Effects and stuff. So hopefully that's just a little, you know, a little taste of like, what you can do with this, um, you know, I could have spent more time finessing the lip sync better and stuff like that, probably. But like, you can get really good results really fast with this thing when you, you know, know what you're doing. Yeah, I think that's been one of the main draws uh, for people with it is that just the speed of what you're able to do. Once you have a character rigged, it is incredibly fast to start uh, putting stuff together. And we've seen some inc really complicated rigs that have all sorts of, you know, arm motions and dance moves and uh, expressions on the face and whatever. And it's it's really like, um, it feels more like puppeteering than yeah. animating, right? At a certain point, it's like you're acting uh, and you're you're able to kind of take on this this persona. Um, and it, it, because of that, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I, I get fun. to yeah. draw robots and act like that and make silly voices all day. And that's, uh, it's it's it works out. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I will say uh, I've always thought it was super fun. I've like put this out at a, a maker's fair before and stuff just for people to play with and like people <laughs> walking by catch themselves and realize what's happening and have a big goofy smile on their face. So yeah. <laughs> if you've never used it, just fire it up and grab one of the characters and you'll probably have a big goofy smile on your face real quick. Um, uh, quickly here, obviously we're live today. So if you have any questions at all, please uh, just drop them in the chat and uh, we'll try to answer as many as we can, um, you know, as soon as it makes sense. Uh, Dave, um, before we kind of like dive into it here, maybe just like a quick bio on you and um, you know, how you, uh, wh what you do and how you ended up with this cool job that you have. <laughs> yeah, uh, so yeah, I am, uh, I've been with Adobe for about nine years now. Uh, I work in, uh, California uh, in the Bay Area with them, and uh, it's great. Um, I was so I was working with another team at first uh, when I first joined character, uh, first joined Adobe. I was working on the Premiere Clip team, which was kind of a precursor to uh, Adobe Premiere Rush. Um, and after after that, I kind of heard about this internal tool called uh, that was codenamed Animal. And uh, I had met uh, Dave Simons, um, who, who was heading up the thing, and he said, "Hey, you want to check this out?" and I did, and I was immediately blown away, even in that early stage um, where it was like, you know, character animation to me had always just seemed 
inaccessible. It felt I, I, I fooled around with it, but uh, the complications of of making a rig and uh, trying to make it look natural, I just wasn't skilled enough to be able to do that stuff. And immediately when I got Character Animator, just something clicked. And this I hear this all the time that when people see it, they're like, "Wait a second, I can do character animation because if you can move your head and talk and uh, add these different motions to your character, you can you know create create character animation." And so um, from that, uh, I I joined, uh, you know, I, I heard about it and I just, I swapped teams internally. Um, this was, yeah, five or six years ago and, uh, haven't looked back since because it's been, it's been a perfect fit. Really. It's a, it's an amazing, incredible team. Um, we're a pretty small team. I think it's only 12 or 13 people all told in the team, um, putting this together. Uh, but we, uh, we have a lot of fun, really smart people working on, uh, just amazing, uh, stuff. And then of course, seeing all the stuff that uh, that everyone, the community makes. And, and we have these community spotlight episodes that we put out of featuring uh, interesting work that um, that uh, people have made. And it's just, uh, it blows us away every every day what, uh, what people are doing with it. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, in this relatively short lifespan, you know, in, in terms of some of the other, um, it's Adobe siblings that are, you know, pushing 25 or 30 years old in some cases, like, Character's only been around for you know uh, five years or something like that. I remember um, kind of the the sneak of it at I think it was the very first After Effects World Conference, which was maybe five or six years ago at this point. Uh -huh. um, and Dave Simon's kind of like I, I don't think he thought any of us were going to really be interested in it. He kind of halfway mentioned it, and then like a bunch <laughs> of people were like, "Tell us more! Tell us more!" Yeah. Um, and yeah, just the possibilities of a performative animation tool like. Um, I, I, I've always kind of had that in my mind. Like, yeah, it's, you know, it's centered around doing characters, but like it, if you think about how it works and not ju just what the name is, like you can do some really interesting stuff with it, even if you don't think that you're a character animator. Um, and I've always thought that was really cool. Um, maybe, uh, for people who have never used it before, um, you want to maybe kind of show us, uh, just yeah. some of the basics here and give us an idea of what's going on. Absolutely. Let me go ahead and share the screen. All right. Okay. So, Oof. yeah, so Character Animator, it allows you to take any Photoshop or Illustrator file, any PSD or AI file. And if you name things a certain way, um, if you name this a head, for example, anything inside this group, head group, is going to move with your own head as you move it around. And the reason for that is because you've tagged it as a head over here. Um, same thing with, uh, you know, my right eyebrow. Uh, that that's also tagged, you know, this way as well. So if you name things a certain way, right eyebrow, head, uh, you know, left pupil, there's kind of these secret codes, these tags that Character Animator then can turn into performance capture animation. So this is just what the, this guy was made in Photoshop, just a simple cat character. And when I go to record mode now, I can put him in a scene and uh, do some stuff. And then if I turn on the webcam, and uh, double click my face. Now he's gonna be moving around with my motion. So as I blink, as I look around with my pupils, as I move my eyebrows, um, all of that is moving with the face tracking. And now when I turn the microphone on, now he's also gonna do the live lip sync. So this is using Adobe Sensei technology, which you've, you're familiar with, obviously After Effects and Premiere, we use this a lot um, in those as well, um, to do some automatic lip syncing. So when I say uh, anything, it's immediately trying to show up the best of 14 different possible mouth shapes that I can create, ah, e, ooh, all that stuff, and automatically doing that. Um, so this is one mouth set, but you can make your mouth look like whatever you want. If you want fangs or you want it to be a big flappy jaw uh, like the Canadians in South Park, uh, okay. it doesn't matter. You've, you've got a lot of flexibility there. Um, and so, yeah, and it's, it just makes it, you know, I, I can either record live here um, and just press a button and record everything all at once, or I can turn things off. So if I turn these red dots off over here, these are called the behaviors. These are kind of the, the brains of the puppet, um, if you will. And so if I only turn on the face behavior, for example, now only the face is moving. It's not gonna move, the, the pupils aren't moving um, anything like that. Uh, the mouth isn't moving, it's only face. And then if I turn all these on, then I can uh, see them all together. So you can do one at a time or everything at once. Uh, you can even bring in an external <laughs> audio file. So if I have a voice actor somewhere else, I take their audio file, I import it into Character Animator, and uh, it's it's I can automatically analyze it and get all those lip sync mouths. Mm -hmm. um, the coolest thing, though, is uh, is this controls panel over here. Yeah. Triggers we feel like are what really bring 
a character to life. So this would probably get boring after a while uh, if this character is just staying like this. But as I start to, you know, do some of these different triggers, all this is is artwork swap artwork swaps in the Photoshop or Illustrator file. So, you know, if I get surprised at something or hmm, you're asking me a question, I don't know about this, or <laughs> that was a great joke, Kyle. Way to go. Funny guy. Or no, nobody's asking any questions in the chat. Yeah. Ah! You know, and just dumb stuff like that. And it's a cartoon character, right? So you can do whatever you want. You can, Aruga, you can do um, all sorts of different things, right? Um, and then, you know, with the hands, uh, I'll, I'll show a little bit later some of the new stuff we're working on, but you can either drag them with the mouse or fingers on a touch enabled device, or you can set pre-done pre poses. So you can kind of go from one pose to the next and back and forth and so on. And then you can add these other custom controls down here that you know you can move your character around. You see, I've got some physics there in the tail and the hair as well. Um, you can add a secondary physics. So th I, this is just scratching the surface. I know you told me to yeah. just basic level and I've been rambling for five minutes. No, I, I, I think this is perfect. You're, you're, you're you know, kind of given a taste, but also showing, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's more advanced stuff here, which I, I think is uh, really crucial. Um, one of the things, I, you kind of just touched on this, but this is the thing that's always stuck in my mind. Like, I think some people get a little um, maybe intimidated about performing stuff. Um, I know you and I both have uh, uh, enough theater background to be dangerous. Um, and, <laughs> and uh, you know, maybe open secret is that a lot of good animators do have a little bit of acting background because it's, it's actually really crucial. But... Um, <clears throat> One thing to think about, uh, one of the other developers from the character team told me this uh, a couple years ago. It's really helpful to maybe think of it the way you might record a song if you were like playing all the instruments yourself. You're probably not going to sing and play the drums and play, you know, lead guitar and, and bass and, and rhythm guitar all at one recording session, right? You might lay down the drum track and then lay down your rhythm guitar and then lay down your vocals. Like you can approach it that way too. And like that's usually how I work is all start with the the audio and kind of see how that feels and then i'll maybe do a take where i'm just doing the eye looks and then another where i'm just worrying about the blinks and the head movement and stuff like that so you can kind of dial it in the way you want and um or just do it all at once and and just go for it so yeah I, absolutely and, that, and that's typically if i'm doing something you know for real for real and not just a quick thing yeah. uh that's absolutely how i'll do it i'll just start with the audio track lay that down and then say, okay, I'm focused on the eyes and focused on the triggers and kind of build it up. And uh, the character animator timeline allows you to blend takes together. So mm -hmm. even if you don't get everything right the first time, you can then say, you know, my head didn't go right in this particular, uh, you know, part of the timeline. I can then record a second take, blend the edges together and it will seamlessly look like you're moving from one position to the other. So you look like a professional performance capture artist. You got it all totally. right the first time <laughs> when in fact it's 56 different things uh, stitched together to do exactly that and, and same with the lip sync you can edit all any mouse shape if it is feel off to you you know you can go in and edit and say no this needs to be a mm -hmm. woo mouth instead of an ah mouth and it needs to be two frames longer um so you know it has that precision if you want it it's that's the nice thing i think it's the flexibility if you yeah. want to dig in and really nerd out and make it as uh, good as possible you have that option or if you just want to hit record and just be a you know dancing unicorn for a few seconds you you can do that as well absolutely uh, uh, and i think that's a great point too like um, those of us that are coming from After Effects, for example, probably have a tendency to be, uh, you know, meticulous and want to like, you know, dive in and make everything perfect. Um, and that can be a hard habit to break sometimes. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it, it should be said that like, you can get in there and do a lot of really fine tuned work if you want. Um, so, uh, I know I've seen a couple questions that might be good to just, uh, address real quick here. Sure. Um, I, I think you mentioned that you can use pre-recorded audio. Uh, a couple of people have kind of asked, like, um, you know, is this just for webcam? Can you use you know, a phone as an input? Would you get better results if you had a DSLR connected instead of a webcam? Any thoughts on any of those? Yeah, so in general, uh, Keratimator is primarily works with any any standard webcam. Uh, and the, the rationale for that was trying to keep it as accessible as possible. So we didn't want anyone to have to buy a fancy depth sensing camera or, you know, really high fidelity things. So honestly, it really doesn't, if your computer can recognize it as a webcam, it, can, it should work in character animator. And really we find it's more about the, uh, the lighting and how close mm -hmm. you are to the camera rather than, uh, you know, how, how, um, you know, high pixel or whatever resolution it has. Um, that, that always seems to be more important. So, um, you know, I think, 
Uh, I don't think phones will work uh, natively, um, but uh, it, it, I, th I, I have seen people do workarounds with DSLRs and things like that. But honestly, uh, right now, I'm like just for this demo, and a lot of times I'm just using the built-in webcam mm -hmm. on my MacBook Pro, and it's totally fine. Um, you know, it, you it, can it, feed. Um, uh, I, I assume this is still requires going through After Effects, but you can feed a pre-recorded video into this as well. Yeah, the, not not exactly natively, but there mm -hmm. are workarounds. Either you do it in After Effects and you can take the data from there and bring it in, or there are third-party tools um, that allow you to create virtual cameras. And if you do that, you create the virtual camera. Character Animator thinks it's a webcam, but it's actually mm -hmm. a video file of, you know, uh, Jack Nicholson and The Shining or something like that. And, yeah. you know, now your cat is, is breaking through the wall and doing crazy <laughs> stuff and scaring everybody. Um, so, yeah, that is an option. Honestly, though, I, that's a question a lot of people say is, can I take this video and do it? And what I found is you're nine times out of 10, you're better off just taking the audio track yeah. and then doing the animation yourself. You're probably gonna get the best results that way. Yeah, I've, I've picked up on this a lot in your, um, uh, by the way, if, you, if you've never you know, seen Dave before, he puts out a, probably a million, might be an underestimate, uh, videos about Character Animator um, on his own YouTube channel. And obviously those all go to the uh, official Adobe pages as well. But um, one thing that a lot of people may not think about, like, you know, if you're doing this uh, 2D animation, like the characters aren't doing like this. It tends to be pose to pose um, a lot. So you might yeah. go like this and then go like this. And the, the movements are a little crisper. Um, and so there's definitely a performance aspect being thoughtful about the way you move, which is part of why you might not want to try to do everything at once. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but it's okay because if you're just alone in your office, no one has to see you waving around like a, like a weirdo. Um, <laughs> yeah, ex except for me because I do these tutorial videos. So right. everyone's seen me be really dumb and, and dance and, and all this all this crazy stuff. And it's okay. I got over that a long time ago. Whatever. Yeah, you, made, you made your choices <laughs> in life. Um, <laughs> uh, I do see a question from uh, Alyssa or Elisa uh, about, is this included in the creative uh, cloud subscription? Absolutely. Um, it's If you have... Yeah, as long as you have the all apps plan, um, you know, not just like a single app Photoshop or whatever. Uh, yes, it's it's right there with all the other video apps. And I think that's that's a good point because Carriage Animator is very reliant on the other apps. Mm -hmm. So there's no drawing tools right now inside Carriage Animator. You are making your characters in Photoshop or Illustrator. And then to export it, you're either exporting to Adobe Media Encoder, which gives you all sorts of choices, or, um, and this is something that's, you know, for After Effects uh, users is great. You can dynamic link it into After Effects or Premiere. So I can take my character, mm -hmm. put a transparent background on it. And just, if I import that CH project file into After Effects, it is going to uh, just show it up, uh, show up as if it were another piece of footage. Yep. And so I can composite it, add all the After Effects stuff to it. So it works in workflows that you already have and are probably using all the time. It's really fits in there um, pretty nicely. Absolutely. That's how I did the intro. I didn't pre-render it out of character or anything like that. I just, you know, did, I think I, I think I did three takes to do the different pieces and then just brought it right in, plopped him on the logo and called it a day. Yeah. Um, it works well. So yeah, it's, it's probably a lot easier than you think if you haven't tried it yet. <laughs> um, so, you know, we're, we're kind of talking around this a little bit, but um, it, I think one of my mo main motivations for today is like, Hey, After Effects users, you should be using this program. Um, and you know, obviously, if you're doing character work, there's a lot of ways that this can make your job a lot easier. Um, and then we'll talk about a few ways where maybe interesting uses for things that aren't even characters. But um, let's uh, you know, kind of talk to that audience a little bit. Um, maybe some things that they wouldn't think about. I know for a while, you know, the the body aspect was maybe a thing that was holding some people back. Although I've always thought it was easier to like. Even if you were just coming in here to do lip sync and you know some face animations, and then you just export that and paste it on a character that you animate manually from there, that's okay yep. too. But um, I'm sure you have some thoughts about you know that workflow or ways where people might not think to be using this. I don't know. Yeah, so I think um, you know there's there's a very deep animation toolbox and uh you know depending on the project you might be using different tools for the the occasion so you you know sometimes you need a hammer sometimes you need a screwdriver sometimes you need a chainsaw i don't know what kind of project that is but you yeah. <laughs> you know you need a, a different different yeah you need different things for different projects and so um i think what's what's interesting about character animator is um 
you know, number one, like we said before, the speed of what you're able to do is just fantastic. So uh, an example is like making an explainer video. Um, and this is something I did a while back, um, made an explainer style video of this little narrator character, like a cartoon version of me um, talking about video games. And why I, here. yeah, so, oh yeah, you, you have the there video. we go. Yeah, so, and it was, you know, it was talking about um, how, how, uh, how uh, video game services are becoming subscri subscriptions and how they're all moving to that kind of model and how I've liked that. And I did the whole character animate, you know, character animation and character animator dynamic linked it into After Effects, add all the graphics going in and out. And, you know, it was really uh, the, the character animation part was the simplest and quickest part of the whole mm -hmm. thing. Um, I was able to, you know, very quickly do different expressions for the character, different arm motions, different hands, and then just throw them into these After Effects things. That's motion blur, throw things in and out, and uh, it, it turned out well. So I think it's one of those things where, um, you know, had I done it, this guy and rigged him up in After Effects and, and done all the keyframes and everything like that, that probably would, I, it would have worked, but it probably would have taken me at least double, maybe triple the time yeah. that I did it in Character Animator. So um, to me, that's the biggest thing it, is it's a, you can tell your clients, oh, this is going to take me forever. And then you do it in Character Animator, you get great results. You're charging the same amount of money, you know, it's, uh, you know, why not? So yeah. uh, that's, that's what we've seen. Using your tools wisely. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, I, I saw a question come in that I think speaks to some of that very well. Um, Annie was asking, can I make the rigging with Duic in After Effects and then use it inside Character Animator? Um, I, I, I assume the answer is no, there's no way to send that. But I think um, you might be thinking about it a little bit backwards. Um, and the, the body tracker that's um, becoming available now in beta um, might kind of make that question uh, obsolete <laughs> in, a, in a minute anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, th right. The correct answer is, yeah, you cannot bring things like uh, Duick or Rubber Hose or those sort of rigs into Character Animator. Um, but uh, Character Animator, uh, you know, you could take, like people have used it in all sorts of ways. Like Kyle said, people have used it just for the lip sync alone and then added that into their character or just the facial features and pasted that on top of the character. So you have options. If you're used to those sort of tools, um, there's no reason you can't do the stuff the character animator feels like it will speed up your workflow and then uh, bring it into the things that you already feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. But yeah, what Kyle was alluding to is we have, um, you know, recently we added this uh, this new feature, um, body tracking, and it's right now in the beta, so it's not in the shipping version. Um, we're currently getting um, feedback for it to, to hopefully get it out um, sometime soon. But uh, yeah, if I, I'll, I'll show you here. So yeah, you can. Uh, I, I will take a second and just make it clear for anyone who hasn't, who isn't aware of this. Um, when we say in beta, we mean in public beta. So if you go into your Creative Cloud app, right where all your other apps are, there's a little beaker icon, um, right? Am I saying that right? And yep, yep. you have access to uh, Premiere, After Effects, Character, uh, probably some other stuff um, that are in public beta right now. So you can be using this today. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, yeah. So check it out. And, and that's all we're doing is getting feedback right now. We're seeing how it's working, um, how people, um, you know, are, are interacting with it, what problems they're running into, because we do want to iron out all the all the bugs and, and get mm -hmm. it working as well as possible before the, um, uh, you know, before uh, a, you know, major release where we ship it out to everyone. But yeah, um, yeah so I've got a character here. And I'm going to stand up. Yeah, here, I'll go ahead and bring her up here. <laughs> she'll, be, she'll be a little broken for a second. One of, one of the things about this is that you kind of need to set your, your default pose so that it knows what to look at. Yeah. So now I've, what I've done is turned on the body tracking. And uh, so now this character, you know, it's still doing the head motions, it's still doing the audio, but now it's also going to track my arms as well and my body. And so I'm able to you know, this arms, like I said before, you have to do it with the mouse or fingers or uh, triggers, but now I can just kind of move my hands around. So now I'm clapping or now I'm, you know, waving or I'm scratching the back of my head, something like that. So now this becomes a much easier and quicker process to do this sort of thing where I do a performance and my arms, my hands are just ready to go. I, you know, okay, this pose, and I'm going to say this and bring this other hand out. I'm going to make this little motion here. Um, and I don't have to wear a skin tight suit. Uh, Kyle, I know you wish I was wearing one today, but uh, with you know, <laughs> ping pong balls all over it, uh, anything like that. Uh, so it, it, it just works. And uh, that's that's the nice thing about it. So kind of the magical thing that happens with the face tracking, now we've expanded it to the body as well. Yeah, that, that's awesome. 
And, and uh, you know, as we pointed out, like, uh, it, you know, it might not be the right tool for every situation, but like, look at this instead of rigging your character up in Duik, for example. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff. And, and you know, th so that's torso up, so that's cool. But, you know, the, the real fun part comes when you do full body tracking. So yeah. let me, uh, I'm going to be away from the microphone, so I'll try to talk uh, loudly. Let's see if I can do this correctly. Okay, so I'm going to calibrate this, stand back. Okay, so now it's also doing the hand motions and the, hand, and the head motions, but now it's also doing the legs. So as I move around, I can, uh, you know, I can kind of move back like this, do a little moonwalk, go forward, <laughs> start dancing, whatever I want. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really cool. And so this, yeah. this allows you to do some, some pretty interesting uh, stuff. I can floss. <laughs> that sort of stuff. So the layer ordering is important here. So right now, mm -hmm. you know, this is kind of a three quarter character. So this hand is in front of him and this hand is behind him. Uh, there's ways to trigger them to like move in different directions. But you notice as I floss, I'm doing it perfectly on the webcam, but it's not showing up, you know, perfectly uh, here. The hands aren't going in, uh, you know, back and forward as they normally would. So it's all about that. Also, it's about knowing your character. So this looks good for a three quarter character. This is not going to look great. He's got some problems right. <laughs> you know, bending that way. That so painful. But it's just it's fun to do. You know, it's fun to play around with. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is really early stages. This has only been out for like a week and a half right now. So um, it's it's pretty early on. But we're uh, we're excited to see what. Whoa! And, and it, here's the thing too. Stuff like this happens when you recap. Well, yeah, it's fine. The, Here, I'll, I'll bring him back up. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Like sometimes these weird things are actually fun. So one of the cool things is you can live stream with Character Animator. And if you check out places like Twitch, check out Castlehead um, or, or some of the other people on there, there's this guy, he's, he's a super villain. He's got a big castle for a head and like weird stuff like this happens all the time. And he just runs with it, he rolls with it and it's great. And, and that when things break in weird, funny ways, like it's just, it's just ridiculous sometimes to see your characters do this stuff. So that's it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I agree. Uh, uh, that's one of my favorite things to do is just like, um, it's been a little bit, but I, I really love plugging like my son's drawings into this and rigging them up a little bit sloppily and seeing what happens and what kind of like weird monster uh, yeah. broken leg <laughs> movements they make. <laughs> um, and uh, just to point this out, because I, I think someone wa uh, asked about this, but um, uh, there, there's a lot of like automatic behaviors you can add as well. So like if you wanted to walk cycle and then, you know, you're kind of performing a lot of other aspects of this, uh, you can do that. Um, uh, I, I don't know. Do you want to say any more about the body tracker before we kind of move on to behaviors? Yeah, I think I uh, just just in general, if if people are interested in it, definitely try it out. And there's a link um, to uh, um, it, on, on the page that talks about it, where we've got a direct link to the forums. And that's where you can give us feedback. If you post a video, if it totally messes up or your character's not working, post a video. Um, we're working on all sorts of things. Like there's some foot sliding issues right now we're taking care of. We're considering adding some smoothness controls to um, give you more control over how one-to-one -one, um, the, the motions are, things like that. Um, and that's based off of feedback that we're getting um, from already in this past week. You know, we've had huge, uh, huge use from this. I mean, this just really blew up. Uh, I think it was mainly because I did a teaser trivia, uh, the teaser trailer that some of you may have saw, seen where I yeah. started back up and the tracking dots go on and then I started dancing and uh, making a fool of myself. And of course, that's the thing that gets, you know, hundreds of thousands yeah. of views, but um, what are you going to do? Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> It's fun. It's new. And uh, I think we're, um, you know, if you kind of want to be on the cutting edge of this stuff and play around with it, um, we'd love to hear your feedback. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, as I said, I've kind of been following the development of this for a couple of years. I've never used it quite as much as I've meant to just because like character animation has never been a thing I was, you know, really leaning into or that my clients were, were wanting. But I've been following this development and, and you, this team in particular has been really like super responsive and super involved with um, the community that's using it and stuff, which is really awesome to see. I, I think sometimes people think Adobe is just like a big faceless company and they don't think about like, no, these are actually pretty small teams developing some of these products and they care about what you think. So uh, be nice to them on Twitter. And <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yep. Um, so, you know, there. Uh, I feel like there's a couple more questions. Oh, uh, here's a really good one, actually, that I'm curious about myself. Um, can you 
take that body tracker data and export that to After Effects or anywhere else? So not natively right now, no. And that we've seen that as a huge request from people mm -hmm. is wanting to export it in, you know, and everyone's got their favorite format that they want sure. to export it out, out as um, one thing or the other. So we've heard that and that is something we're looking into. Um, I, I doubt it'll happen for V1 at least, um, but that is something that could be possible uh, for the future for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and just cause I just saw it pop up, I'd, I'd seen a person or two ask about plugging 3D models in into here and uh, I assume the answer is still no, but as you may have seen at the top of the show, that was a 3D model that was doing this. It's it's a 3D model exported as layers into Photoshop so that it can be rigged properly for a character to use. But yeah, so it's great. not going to be a full you know 3D Pixar mm -hmm. style uh, character. You're not going right. to get that. But we've seen people do some really creative workarounds, and if you can put it into a Photoshop or Illustrator file, you can make it into a character animator puppet. And so. Um, we have, you know, this kind of ties to behaviors. We have a head turn behavior, for example. Mm -hmm. So when you turn your head, the character will turn its head. We have, you know, as Kyle was saying, the walk behavior. We have an automatic blink behavior, which will just automatically mm -hmm. blink your character's eyes instead of trying to track your blinks. So we have these, you know, 20 or so behaviors you can add to your character and you can add as few as you want or as many as you want to get the quality of animation you're looking for. And so it, it really depends on, you know, a, a more hand sketch character versus a more 3D-ish character versus a claymation character. Some of my yeah. favorites have been people who Those take a, you know, make a character out of clay, lower the FPS to 12 frames per second, and it looks like you're doing live stop motion. Um, so there's a lot of really cool ideas like that that we've seen people experimenting with. Yeah. Um, and uh, again, like, you know, think of this as a tool in your toolbox. Like maybe you're doing a character focus piece in After Effects and your main like hero character needs, um, you know, needs the finesse of keyframes. But maybe there's 10 characters in the background and you really want to animate all of them by hand or do you want to like push them over here and you can say breathe, auto blink and now they're alive and you can just plop them into the background and be done in like, you know, an hour with your entire background instead of spending days animating each one individually. Exactly. Yeah. So people, yeah, people are doing some pretty cool things. And that's the nice thing too. I mean, I use the product too, right? So uh, there's a cartoon I put out recently called consoles. It's about mm -hmm. all the video game consoles uh, talking together oh, and yeah. kind of, yeah, kind of acting with each other. So it's, you know, Xbox is talking to PlayStation. There they are. They share an apartment. Um, and, you know, they're kind of making fun of each other about, uh, you know, Xbox doesn't have any games, PlayStation, it's the same third person action game over and over again. Uh, and, you know, it's just, it's, if you'd like video games, it's funny, check it out. It's only three minutes long, but this was all done in Character Animator, um, the characters, and then I composited them in After Effects. So I did each of the characters, um, added like the shadows and stuff in After Effects, drew the background. I actually drew the characters in Adobe Fresco, um, exported as a PSD file, um, brought them out, and uh, it's a really nice workflow. So I know we've shown kind of the one character workflow with the explainer video before, but you know, having multiple characters and bringing them in um, works well too. Oh, there's Nintendo Switch coming in uh, as well. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's so it's fun. And, and I think using it, um, it, it makes me uh, better understand what are the issues or what are the things that yeah. I want, um, you know, moving forward and kind of the features we're focused on. And like, you know, all these arm motions, body tracking wasn't here yet. So I had to do them all um, triggered and by hand. And Can now we, if I I'm, I'm going to interrupt today, you for just a second and rewind this. So yeah. watch this right here, the way the hair moves. Mm. Uh, is that a thing that seems useful to you, After Effects people that have been doing that manually? <laughs> yeah, so phys physics is uh, physics is one of those behaviors that, uh, um, you, you, you know, just it's w one of those things that by default you have um, as an example that you can do. So um, here, I'll, I'll show you if you want to go back to the, uh, the carriage emitter screen. Uh, yeah, here. Phew, there we go. So, um, so this this character has has physics in her hair, right? Mm -hmm. So as I move around, she's got this nice secondary animation. It's just something I don't have to worry about at all. Um, and if I turn the physics, if I dig in here, like if I turn the stiffness down, right now it's at hundred percent. If I turn this down to one percent, now I've got some pretty wavy hair yeah. that I can play That's around with. Super fun way um, to break this, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we, we've seen people make these really complicated hair systems alone where they've got, you know, individual physics behaviors. You don't just have to have one physics behavior. You can have different ones. So we've seen people, they have one with like gravity facing down, but then they want spikes going up. And so they have gravity facing this way instead to make those like, you know, crazy anti-gravity hairspray happening. 
Um, and, and you can add wind effects. You can just add a lot of cool stuff. So it's really fun to play around with. And that's the type of stuff that allows you to um, not even think about it um, and just do it. This character also is rigged with um, motion lines. So as I move her hand, you can rig it so these lines will automatically appear if you go to a certain speed past a certain threshold. And again, it's just one of those things you just set up in your character rig, and then you don't have to worry about. Um, and and we we add little touches like that to really help your character, uh, you know, come to life. Now you were saying as well um, about you know kind of using it in weird ways. And the physics thing is funny because one of our example puppets uh, that we include in the app is the chicken blaster. Um, and this is just the dumbest thing. I made this in like one day, uh, but you can, because we have this physics system, you can have collidable objects and you can, you know, shoot things out. So I have a particle system emitter here of chickens and they're knocking over these collision uh, boxes over top of lava. And, uh, oh, I can't get those last boxes. It's a really hard game, uh, but you, you get the you get the picture of what's possible. So I think this is the cool thing is that people are using it in all sorts of different ways. Um, and and I, the, the one example that I, I hear a lot that people have done is like for a tree yep. animation blowing in the wind, right? They'll kind of, all right, I've added the dangle to the leaves and I'll just kind of sway my head back and forth to get that natural motion yep. automatically. Um, I've seen people do it with airplanes. Like, you know, they move their head down and then it goes up and the plane is rising and turning and things like that. Basically, if you take something and just tag it as a head in character animator, that's all you have to do. And you get this, you know, fun, fun motion that you can, you know, play around with. All right, I want dancing palm trees in the background. Uh, just do it this way. And it takes, you know, it takes two seconds to do. And it's it's fun. Yeah. It, yeah. I just like, I, I love that you showed that example because that's such a great, like, so many things like that that would be really hard to do manually and, you know, really to, to do well manually, you know, right. and you can see how easy it is here. And if you do, if you do it and you don't quite like it, just do it again and it'll take you, you know, another 10 seconds or whatever. Yeah. Um, and anything that has that kind of reactive physics sort of behavior, balloons, uh, trees like this, um, you know, you can effectively, if you think outside the box, uh, kind of use this like, Newton or one of the other physics plugins for After Effects because it's mm -hmm. it's essentially what's going on here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's and and again, we've seen people do, uh, you know, for for a tie on a character or clothes or a dress mm -hmm. or other things or yeah, completely different things uh, like like trees and airplanes and balloons. Um, and and I think anytime you think I could really use natural motion here. Uh, wind blowing into something or fabric or, you know, whatever. Um, there's a lot of really cool possibilities with character in there. It's, it's worth experimenting with. Absolutely. And and like I said earlier, like, if you have never opened this, uh, just open it up, pick a character, and I guarantee that you're going to have a big, stupid smile on your face while you're doing it. You may not even notice until a few minutes in, but uh, you will, because it's just, it's fun. Um, uh, you kind of showed speed lines too, which is great. Uh, uh, another great feature, like even if you're using this for just like general motion design uh, purposes, think of those kind of reactive things that maybe you don't want to do manually and uh, it's worth checking this out. Um, yeah. I have uh, a lot of questions in here today. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you want me to, uh, let, let's dig into one or two here and let's see. So this is a good question about workflow from Sean. Um, so he's kind of thinking about uh, saving time by creating uh, unique elements and then kind of apply them to an available puppet and modify it as needed instead of um, creating from scratch. And I would imagine that's something you can speak to there. Yeah, um, it's it's pretty easy to, um, yeah, to, you know, we, number one, we have a ton of uh, free example puppets that you can download. Mm -hmm. So um, plenty of characters in all sorts of different styles. Um, and, uh, the, you know, we, at least well over 100 free characters that you can download. There's several included in the app. There's about 20 or so that are free that are on the home screen of the app. But then um, there's a lot more that you can go, uh, you know, online. There's links in, in the app itself to go. It says see more and you can click to see, see all of those. So if you want the 3D Red Monster, for example, that Kyle showed earlier, that's it. We tend to release about... Uh, one or two new puppets a month. Um, and so if you keep an eye on that page, we'll have new ones. Um, and then we have links to third party vendors as well, who will allow you to, um, uh, who know this rig and stuff inside it out. And they've got, you know, people have storefronts of puppets uh, mm -hmm. that they're making uh, for this stuff as well as custom puppet creation services. But yeah, once you, um, 
once you have a basic character up and running, it's really easy to just keep moving forward and trying things you and you can copy behaviors you can um and paste them between puppets you can do things like that like take the rigging from one and and uh put it on the other uh so there's there's little tips and tricks like that that help um from a you know from a from a workflow standpoint but yeah overall the way you know that that i tend to use it a lot is i'll yeah i'll pick an example character i'll do a quick you know talk or whatever i'm trying to do um mm -hmm. and uh and bring it into after effects add the finishing touches export it out and call it a day yeah and i think um, you know, if you're, if you are needing to build a character from scratch, I think a, a great place to start, look through the example characters and find one that has the functionality already that you're after. And then you'll find that you can just open the Photoshop or Illustrator file, kind of start swapping your own artwork over that. And like, you're, you know, a lot of that setup work is, is done already for you then. Yeah, that's one of the reasons to have that we have these example characters is mm -hmm. because you know people say, oh, I want to make a seven-eyed floating tentacle creature, and we actually have an example of that. Like, how do you do the multiple eyes if you only have two eyes? How do they track? Well, you have to add multiple eye gaze behaviors and all this other stuff, but it's possible, and you wouldn't know that until you see a character like that. Oh, and it's floating. So how do I get that floating effect? Okay, and so we have all these working examples that you can mm -hmm. see, and that's that's great advice, Kyle. Is find a character that looks like what you're trying to do. And uh, do you want the walk functionality? Do you want it to be able to turn its head? Do you want uh, you know, a claymation style look? There's characters out there that allow you to, to try that out. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's test my memory here. Maybe I'm mixing stuff up, but is that Schmarflop? Yeah, that is Schmarflop, wow. <laughs> that is a, that's a deep cut, wow, yeah. nice cut. <laughs> um, so let's see. Uh, so we, we had a, a request or two. I'm, uh, I'm guessing this may not be possible, but um, Sean was kind of asking, can you show the workflow of actually recording takes? Uh, would it maybe be better to just re refer to one of your multiple YouTube videos on this, or is that possible when you're live? Yeah, I can show it quickly here. Okay. Sure, no problem. Uh, OK, hey. so there we go. All right, so we got a character here. So what I would probably do is I'd start with the audio, um, but let's just start uh, just for the sake of time. Let's start with the audio and the face behavior. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna go here. I'm gonna press mm -hmm. record. Gives me a little countdown. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to, oh, it's not recording the audio. Ah, because I didn't do the lip sync. That was- There you go, hard. see? There you, we go. That, now that's a great note. You gotta make sure that you enable the stuff that you want. Exactly, okay, so here we go. Let's try this again. Hey everybody, welcome to School of Motion. My name is Toll the Cat and I'm having a great day here. And uh, my uh, my face is blue and I'm not sure why. I've never seen a blue cat before, but that's okay. Bye. Okay, uh, Emmy award winning stuff there, wonderful performance. <laughs> but what that did, once I remembered to turn these things on in red, uh, is let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. So it recorded tracks for anything that I had a red dot arms for and it saw data changing. So I see my audio track here. I see my face track here. I see my lip sync track and I see every single syllable, every single word uh, lip sync that I uh, did, it's showing me the mouth shapes for that. So like here, I have an R mouth, but I can say, you know what? Let me right click that. I actually wanted that to be an A mouth instead and it's gonna change that automatically. Mm -hmm. So you have full control over how this stuff works. And then I went to say, okay, so now I'm going to do, um, let's do the eye gaze and let's do the triggers. And so with triggers, I'm gonna press these buttons and I'm also gonna move my eyes around. So now I'm gonna go back to the beginning and we will press record again. Actually, I'm gonna, yeah, turn the audio off here and let's try this. Okay, so I should add an extra buy there at the end. But so now what that did was create these extra tracks of triggers. Mm -hmm. And you'll see these different things down here um, that are showing me my different motions that I did with my right hands, the palm flips, all these were pre-done in the triggers of how the hands should look, where they should go, um, all of that stuff. And it's showing up here in the timeline. So again, I've got these elements that I can move around and manipulate um, like I want. And then the thing I was saying about, uh, you know, the, the, um, the, the face and, and if I made a mistake, how can I blend multiple things together? Well, let's try that. So I'm just going to twirl this stuff up and say, okay, let's say I made a mistake right here. And I really want the face to be, you know, in a different place. 
So I can disarm uh, eye gaze. Let's do face, only arm face. Let's move it a little bit more leaned in here. I'm gonna turn on slow motion recording and just do it for half speed. So I'm gonna do something like this. As an added bonus, he talks in really slow motion voice. Okay, and uh, great. That's why I'm using the beta, so it just crashed. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing it live, folks. We are doing it live. So technically, theoretically, I was using the beta because that's what body tracking is in, so I wanted mm -hmm. to show that. But yes, what it would do is it would allow you to record that face thing, blend it, um, and uh, and make it look seamless and, and put it together. And there's plenty of video tutorials over there to show it without yeah. crashing, so um, <laughs> check that out. Yeah, I, I've always found it to be very stable uh, when using the full production version, so. Yeah, yeah. They let anything pass the beta, I'll tell you. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's... Um, uh, we'll we'll see if it makes sense to show uh, takes again. Maybe uh, maybe there's a, an existing project or something. But like that's um, you know we were kind of talking about doing pose to pose before. Uh, you know when you're thinking about recording, you can't even just um, you know think about like do a take like this, do a take like this, and then you can fine tune where that blend happens and essentially be making pose to pose animation that way. Yeah, and I think that's the thing. I think that a lot of people, when they first get it, they're like, oh, look, I'm live. I can move all around and crazy. And for 2D animation, that's usually what you not what you want to do. So it is really mo more about moving from one post to the next and holding on that and, and that sort of stuff. And, you know, we've seen, um, you know, the Nickelodeons and Disneys of the world who have used Character Animator for, you know, different, different live streams they've done or Instagram mm -hmm. posts where they have a cartoon character talking back and forth with the audience and responding to comments. Um, and they're able to do it just really quickly and get, you know, they've got their character, they know their style guide. They, you know, there's people that turn the face tracking completely off and they do everything frame by frame. Um, and, uh, you know, you can do that. So th that's one of the other behaviors is the cycle layers behavior that allows you to put a frame by frame animation animated sequence. And then when you press a button, fire will happen or, you know, your character will have a multi-frame blink or a multi-frame mouth. Um, and that's the coolest stuff is when you mix mm -hmm. the frame by frame uh, stuff with live animation, uh, with performance capture, it just creates really interesting uh, things where people kind of you know, it, wait, is this really live? Like, no, this looks hand-drawn, but it's actually working live. Yeah. And uh, like The Simpsons was our first biggest thing where they did um, the Simprovised uh, episode where Homer improvises, you know, the whole thing's about Homer doing improv class. And at the end, they did a live Q&A with people um, on the East Coast and West Coast. They did it mm -hmm. twice. And Homer took live calls from people uh, asking questions. And it was all done with Character Animator live. Uh, we were all crossing our fingers that, you know, it would work <laughs> perfectly and worked okay. And it, it, it did. It worked really well. And um, uh, what was it Conan that has had, uh, or am I mixing up my late night shows? Colbert. Um, Colbert is the one. Colbert. With, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Colbert had tons of, of this on there. Uh, various politicians and celebrities and stuff. And those rigs are insane. They're like, uh, you know, things nested within things because there were characters that could like turn into other things. And so they'd have a whole new set of behaviors within that sub puppet and stuff is crazy. Yeah, they had, they had a, because they did this cartoon Donald Trump. And so Steven would be talking to a cartoon version of Trump and he was just ridiculous. And yeah, one time his skin split open and a butterfly came out of him and started floating. So I don't know why, I don't remember exactly why that happened, but to know that that's possible that you could do <laughs> because that. Because they could. Uh, I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. And, and and that's the nice thing too, is that live thing. So that was um, Tim Lukey and the team over there. They figured out a way, okay, let's we can live stream this. So let's just composite it over top of live footage and they did that. So using the NDI um, plugin, uh, you can connect a character animator to a variety of sources. We've seen it used that way. We've seen it, uh, you can even hook it into the Unreal Engine. We've seen people do like VR setups where character animator characters are talking to you uh, in VR. So uh, there, it, there's a lot of, you know, this is kind of the early stages of this stuff and people are doing some really exciting stuff with it. Yeah, and um, yeah, just if you haven't thought about the live trigger aspect of this stuff and you know may, there's probably instances where this might not be the best tool but like uh, i know um, my friend brian beam uh essentially made a family feud style game show that he set up in here and just like built all these tr triggers and you know there's these little animation sequences you can trigger that's certainly not a character at all but um it's a great way that you can do stuff like that if you want to just be able to hit keys and make things happen too <laughs> 
Yeah, we've heard of some really novel ideas of, of like that. Brian's was great, like having a live game show that he could kind of interact with and do cool stuff with. Um, Halloween, um, there's a guy on the yeah. team uh, who they set up a character, you know, like a floating ghost or pumpkin or something like that. And it talks back to the kids as they come. And, you know, every so year I say I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. So he projects a big screen and they do like some rear projection stuff. And it's like, hey, that's an awesome Spider-Man costume. And it's like, whoa, this yeah. pump, crazy pumpkin is is talking to me. That's amazing. Um, and then, yeah, the, just just stuff like that. I think people are experimenting with it. There's a um, children's hospital, I think, in Chicago that um, a guy rigged it up. There was a designer who worked for them and he rigged up a Mr. Potato Head and they had a way to um, do a game show with the kids that Mr. Potato mm -hmm. Head was hosting and he could interact with the kids and they all could call in and you know do a Q&A with him. And uh, it was just really cool that this interactive cartoon character experience yeah. they were able to create with, with a character animator. And I, not a week goes by where we don't hear one or two or three of these crazy stories of someone using it in some way we hadn't even thought of. So um, it's, it's, it keeps us on our toes and it's fun to, fun to hear all those stories. <laughs> well, and that, you know, that goes back to what I said earlier too, like uh, the live performance aspect of it was probably not something you guys even conceived of when this thing was launched, right? Yeah, it was, it was something that we were like, well, you know, we should, you should be able to perform it and record it and that's fun. And the live was kind of like that came with the territory. It's like, well, we can mm -hmm. do also do this live, I guess. And, the, the connection, the way uh, originally you could connect uh, just with a uh, Mac thing called Siphon. And uh, Dan on the team did that like in, in one week, just in his free time. We had an innovation week where he was just able to do whatever. And that's what we decided to do was this Siphon plugin. Three months later, it's you, the Simpsons is using it for their live, uh, you know, their live show. So be careful what you code because uh, the Simpsons <laughs> might use it in three months. Uh, so, yeah, I think that and the live aspect is just is probably... Um, we see like, like on Twitch, like I said, uh, Castlehead and others, um, there, there's a lot of really cool, innovative stuff happening there where people can type commands into the chat and trigger certain things the character does. So if you do a certain donation amount or if you subscribe or something like that, the character's eyeballs go crazy or something happens on the screen or, you know, crazy things like that. People are finding all sorts of ridiculous things to do. Awesome. Um, let's see if maybe there's like one or two questions here. Uh, I want to get the show wrapped up uh, so that we can watch the new Red Giant show, which starts in about six minutes here. So um, maybe maybe see if there's like one really good question to kind of close this out. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see. I should I should have been ready for this. Um, well, <laughs> so. Frank asked if this physics engine is ever coming to After Effects, which is not a, a thing that you have control over. But um, I mean, sorry. For that would be opinion. nice. I mean, it's uh, yeah, we we I mean, we primarily added it in not just to blast chickens into boxes, but, you know, for, no, for no, things no, like the hair. Yeah. I mean, OK, partially because of that. But, you know, as we started with these characters, that was an immediate piece of feedback early on is the hair, you know, for a character felt very flat and there wasn't much we could do with it. And so even, and the rigging of the hair is really simple, right? You just, you just move the origin to where you want it to pivot from. You just add a single tagged hang handle at the end called dangle. And that's all it is. And as soon as you do that, it will move live with whatever physics parameters you've done. So, you know, you could export, make some character animator, export it out into After Effects or Dynamic, link it there um, to get those results. But yeah, I have no control over um, <laughs> if it's coming to After Effects, maybe one day. And I should point out that you can keyframe um, some of the properties in here, like your you know position. So you could absolutely build something, you know, uh, if you just had a ball with like a chain on it and you wanted it to be reactive, you could just push that in here and you can keyframe that position here in Character Animator and then export that out to After Effects if you want. Yeah, 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 we have, you know, keyframes were a much at, at requested feature and we've added them and uh, uh, yeah, it, it's it's nice to have that as well. So again, like frame by frame animation, keyframes, plus the performance capture, you can be really, uh, you know, dangerous with this sort of stuff. And that's where it's, uh, that's where it gets exciting. But yeah, it, you know, I think the way I look at it, the way that I use it at least is I use character animator for my character animation. And mm -hmm. I tend to use After Effects for everything right. else. So we do have a camera system. We do have um, some other things that you can do in Character Animator. You could do multiple characters in a scene. It's not just one character. But I find I have more control over that stuff with the kind of tried and true 
compositing tools that something like After Effects or sure. Premiere Pro does instead. So um, for me, that's my workflow. And that's probably one of the more common workflows that we see people do. Well, uh, hopefully, if nothing else, um, for people who have always kind of meant to take a look at it and, uh, you know, maybe never thought it was a serious tool for them or not something that fit into their workflow, hopefully we've changed your mind and you'll open it up right after the show and play around and make something super fun. Um, and uh, if we want to learn more about Character Animator, where should we go? Yeah, there's tons of websites and, and places to go. Um, maybe the easiest thing would be to uh, either go to my website, OKSamurai.com, O-K-A-Y Samurai.com, um, or search for OK Samurai on YouTube. Um, and uh, it, it's that's where all the tutorials are. And you'll find links in each of those videos. Almost all of them have a free puppet associated with them. So you'll find links to the puppets. Um, and that's probably the best best way to learn is just watch those tutorials. Watch me make a fool of myself um, over and over again in the webcam and uh, have, have fun with that. But yeah, we would love to see what you make. So um, we use hashtag character animator on social media to see what people are making with it. And uh, that's the stuff we look at for adding into our community spotlight mm -hmm. episodes. Um, so use that as inspiration and we would love to see what, what uh, your audience creates with it as well. Yeah, those are, those are great. Uh, Dave puts out awesome videos all the time that both show you how to make stuff, but also, like he said, shows all the amazing, creative, outside the box stuff that other people are using this for. So a uh, great way to get ideas and inspiration for this stuff. Um, okay, a uh, little bit of School of Motion business before we wrap up. Um, our registration for our summer session opens on Monday. Um, the summer session will start July 5th, but uh, it opens up on Monday. So you have about a, a month there if you are interested. But, you know, some of the courses sell out, so I would get on it. Um, while this is After Effects based, I do want to point out that we have a character animation boot camp. Um, and it's it's based on using Duic rigs in After Effects. But a lot of the same ideas, like the, the way that you think about doing character animation, is still directly relevant, even if you're using a different tool. Um, and I do want to point out that a rigging academy that can show you how to set up those Duic rigs um, comes bundled with that right now. Um, also, we do have a newer course called Demo Real Dash, which um, some of the results from the first instance of this are just amazing. Um, seeing kind of the before and after of people's demo reels is nuts. So uh, if you feel like you need to step up your reel and the way you present yourself, check this out. Um, I am super excited to go through this content myself, even though right now I don't really need to <laughs> worry about a demo reel. Um, but uh, yeah, Ryan Summers teaches that and I'm sure um, just has like tons of amazing wisdom in there. And I've seen the results, so uh, I know. Um, okay, uh, any other parting thoughts that you wanna hit us with before we wrap this up? Uh, no, just thanks for having me kyle it's been a pleasure i've known kyle for for quite a while and so this was awesome that we we got uh the ability to do this mm -hmm. and uh um yeah i'm i'm excited to to see where i mean i showed body tracking today but we have some more secret stuff we're working on behind the scenes that i'm not allowed to talk about yet but keep an eye out because we're we, we've been very very busy uh over the past few months you always are there's always something new over there that uh, <laughs> i feel like i can barely even keep up with like oh i want to try that i want to try that yep Cool. Well, Dave, thank you so much for being on here today and showing this uh, again. Hopefully, um, you know, there's a few people that uh, have it opened already on their other monitor uh, playing around with it. So um, we look forward to seeing what you guys make with it. And uh, thanks so much for being on. Thanks for hanging out with us in the chat. And we'll see you next time. See you. Bye.